Okay, there's a lot of misconception out there about what this symbol means, because unfortunately, a lot of Americans get their understanding of theology from uh, Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, which is terribly unfortunate. But we're going to go over what this symbol actually means and why it is on all, all of our money. In order to do that, we got to have basic understanding of theology to understand the founding fathers who made this money. They were, you know, Protestant Christians. So, uh, meaning that their version of Christianity was a heretical version of Christianity because they were Protestant. They followed the teachings of the Protestants, which were protesting a few renegade priests in Germany's bad decisions, so they protested and revolted from the entire Christian church uh, during the 1400s. So they protested the church, they formed their own church, and then began teaching heresy. So first they committed apostasy, and then they started teaching heresy. And then, uh, you know, 300 years later or so, when the Americans had to come together and make this money, uh, yeah, a lot of them were Masons because their heretical Christianity allowed them to be members of secret societies, which is not okay in uh, in traditional Orthodox Christianity. You are not allowed to be a member of a secret society. So one of the errors of Protestantism that goes down, the error propagates itself through the generations. 300 years later, you have secret societies. And part of secret society was these symbols, which they thought were Christian, okay? So look here, this triangle, they thought was, uh, they, they used that symbol as part of uh, a way to identify with the Holy Trinity, okay? So they, they thought the pyramids had some ancient knowledge in it. That's why they were heretical. They were allowing this belief to happen and still call themselves Christians because they thought there was some magical powers with the, you know, the occult stuff in the pyramids that the, it was built long before the Egyptians. And it was built by Noah, who had built the ark with the use of giants, the Nephilim, which is all utter nonsense. But that's what they believed. They were occult. Okay, well, they believed in the occult. Well, not understanding it was occult because they had gone awry. Now, this uh, all-seeing eye, this is the eye of providence. They just thought that this was the eye of God. Again, you know, the pyramids in Egypt and Cairo, they're all, the cap is it's gone. They're decapped, right? So, and we have all kinds of pictures of what we surmise they might have been big, solid pieces of gold that got taken or, or whatever. But, you know, the occult, the Protestant occult in the 17, 16, 1700s came up with their own ideas on what those actually represented. And it was the all-seeing eye of God because, again, they saw this as some form of the Holy Trinity. You know, in Cairo, the the main pyramids, there's two big ones and one smaller one. So this was some belief they had about the pyramids representing the the Holy Trinity. And that was their triangle shape. That's why there's three of them. Uh, the smallest one being the third person of the Trinity that you know descends from the other two. So this was their belief. Money now is the second part of the equation. Now that we understand Protestant belief and the occult belief, now we have to go in to understand money, and it all originates from Babylon, well, the first you know modern society, modern economy. They weren't a modern society technologically, you know, but they were for the time, right? Okay, so they had a very vast banking system. It was highly complex. It was uh, mature economic systems. So they had the first money. And from then on, from the Babylonians and on, what the Babylonians did is make state money. Now, the history has always been private money, each individual bank. You know, this got, it's the Venice idea, the idea of what happened in Venice. All the merchants went with their favorite bank, and all the bankers had their own private notes, and they were so reputable, and they did such good business that the merchants just trusted their, their money. But they would put this kind of a, a stamp on it, right? All the money had a stamp. So that's why our money has stamps. It has to be, it makes it official when it's stamped. Okay, so the bank would put its seal on it, the private bank. 
Now, government had to get involved with money because the private banking system got so complex and so intricate that they needed a lender of last resort or they needed someone to make a unit of account that they could then use. Either of those two functions is what the government does with money. It has to create the money that people can use when transactions become so spread out across the country that the reputation of the bank issuing the currency isn't known in the place that the goods are traveling to when the distance is so vast that it takes a long time the banks are less willing to do transaction i mean imagine going from new york to san francisco delivering goods out there before the railroad you know the banks in san francisco weren't really i mean you know jp morgan that's why wells fargo was out there and american express they had to go out there so that they could be you had to send people from new york out there that's what the rothschilds had to do to do banking empire is send your representatives out to different parts where you would do banking out to different cities the main hubs of, of transaction of commerce you would send your representatives out there and they would establish themselves in that so then merchants could go from one place to another and sell their wares and they would know that the currency they're using so they don't have to lug around all this gold that the currency they're using is a reputable currency. Well, it was done with a stamp, okay? And everyone in the business of using that currency, that unit of account, would know that the stamp was genuine or not, right? That's how they became good merchants. So then the idea now that Babylon is, is we're the government, we have to secure the unit of account on transactions against the empire, across the whole empire, so we must make the currency. And the merchants the, and the bankers wanted that because it facilitated quicker and more liquid commerce. So they allowed the government of Babylon, this was an effort undertaken by all the financial people, the financial wheelers and dealers of the time, the financiers of ancient Babylon, okay? It was that power was thrust onto the government to create the currency because they needed it. Now comes the part where how do you stamp it? What does the government stamp it with to show you? Well, what was the government back then? It was decree that they were divine rulers, right? It was, it was decreed by the gods that this ruler was the legitimate ruler. So their stamps were stamps with religious you know, intonation, religious undertones, whatever their God was, they would put a stamp of it on there. That's generally how it goes. The Romans put the stamp of Caesar, who was, you know, their God, whatever pagans do. Okay. That was their stamp on their money, the government money. So now you fast forward uh, several thousand years later, and what do heretical Protestants do with their government money? Well, they're going to put the religious stamp on it. It's not like some secret code like, hey, we're all Masons, we're in on it, you're in on it too, like, you know, while we go and be lizard people. Like, that's ridiculous. It's just not the way it's done. I mean, this is not the, the, the symbol of lizard people. It's just the symbol of heretical Christians who've been allowed their entire adult lives to believe in nonsense Okay, and it's it's the natural reaction of a government looking to stamp a currency with its seal of approval. They naturally stamp it with some religious object, and because their religion is a bit off, because in the 1400s, some guy in Germany did not like the things that a few priests were doing, which was bad, and he was right to dislike it. But then the answer was to, you know, reform those couple of guys, not reform break away from the entire universal church and then eventually start his own church. He changed the Bible. He took books out, you know, that, that were put back in later because they had to be because there's all kinds of conflict of, uh, you know, of the, the theological constructs that they had once they went heretical. So that's the issue. That's what this means. I mean, it is just a silly stamp from guys who didn't know how to go about following their creator, okay? How to go about worshiping their creator. They were allowed to believe heretical things, and so they believed that this symbol represented their God because they were allowed to be in a Masonic society. Now, the Masons were, you know, they claim that some of that stuff, there's elements of truth in Dan Brown's, uh, you know, that 
uh, Da Vinci Code. There's elements, but, he, you know, like any Hollywood thing, he takes some elements of truth and then goes way outside of the bounds of reality to make a crazy story, okay? Well, it was a good, entertaining story, but it's, it's just not true. You know, the Knights Templar and all this stuff and all this... Now, there's elements of truth in it, I mean, or else it wouldn't appeal to people. There's something in there that goes, aha, when people hear it, they, they can grasp onto that. And yeah, there are some elements of truth, but it goes way off base. It's all crazy. But this is what this pyramid means. It's just their stamp for money. You know, it doesn't make them any less nefarious. I mean, the government is always doing nefarious things. But it does debunk a lot of this, you know, a proper understanding of theology will debunk a lot of the myths out there about all this conspiracy stuff. You know, there's appropriate conspiracy you know, conspiracy right out in the open. And then there's tinfoil hat stuff. So, you know, you got to pick and choose how much time you want to devote and energy you want to devote towards believing and acting upon and behaving as though tinfoil hat stuff is the reality or digging a little deeper and getting a correct understanding of the elements you're trying to figure out truth to. This one being two parts, you know, the element of of theology and the element of money. Where do these two go back? Keep going back and find out where these two elements ultimately have their genesis and then understand the ideologies that formed those ideas and kind of work in your head back how we get to present day and all the error propagation that can happen along the way and just follow the logical sequencing after you figure out the genesis of these elements you're trying to find truth to Work it back logically to present day, and you'll arrive at the answer of whether or not there's some, you know, conspiracy to get into, or whether this is just one of those things that happens, and it's a silly thing, and we all did it just because people did it a long time ago.